All right, we don't we don't have a quorum. Hopefully, Joe Prisco will call in. So let's get started, and we can talk about items three, four. So, um, that Tony quarterly investment review for the first quarter. Did you? Has anybody you received the quarterly investment uh, review that we um, received from FIA? Hopefully, everyone has received that, and uh, I can go through this if you'd like. I can tell you that since this quarterly review, which is um, which has a loss of six, about seven hundred thousand dollars, we have gained back. Three hundred sixty thousand. So um, we've gained a little more than half of that back, oh. and um, you know, you know, no one is a stranger to the activity that's taking place in the market. But um, we have a had a loss of a quarter of twelve point six percent, which um, it was pretty steep. But uh, even with that loss, we're still. Um, have a total uh, gain of $1.3 million, about $3 million, uh, $3.5 million contribution. So uh, we're still doing well overall even with that loss, the, um, which is indicated in the uh, charts on page 15 and 14. Those are sort of the two areas where it has a lot of our activity. I know we've re, uh, discussed about the asset allocation with FIA and the target allocation, and you know, we're keeping an eye on that also, see if there's an opportunity to uh, reallocate some of the assets. It's nothing we're doing at the moment. You can see the, um, the international equity and domestic equity are low, you know, lower compared to uh, the target. Okay, any questions? Um, with that, we can uh, go to item four, which is OPAD Valuation Review, Steve Mansky. Good evening. Um, I'd, I'd like to share my screen, Mr. Chairman, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, Just the background, Steve is our uh, actuary who has um, performed our valuation of our OPEB, uh liability, which is the whole reason why we have this fund. So uh, Steve will outline uh, the evaluation report and uh, some of the main points. Go ahead, Steve. Thank you. I'm just trying to um, see how I share here. Doesn't seem to have an option here. If you go to, um, if you go to share. Yeah. You have to, and then it says my screen. Does yeah, it's, it, kind, it's, it's kind of have, it's like grayed out on mine. Um, Hey guys, hey guys, could I interrupt? Um, Karen, Joe called me and said he can't get on. He he said he can hear us, but he can't um, talk. So, and he wondered if you could call him on his cell. Is that a possibility? Is that possible, Tony? That we can do it that way? Uh, and I, he can, I can I can bring him in. Um, okay. If you want me to call him, and he'll you'll be able to hear him. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry. I'm I'm gonna mute myself again until I yeah. yeah, for I mean for some reason it's not the share and it's not allowing me to click on that my screen. Um but I certainly can watch does everybody have a copy of the presentation? Yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna refer to the pages that we won't be able to excuse me. All right. But um, and I know I understand we're on a pretty tight time frame tonight, so I probably won't cover all the slides because we need sure. to be done by what ten of six. Tony. Okay, Joe's on now. Okay, oh, right. I'm, I'm now. Okay, hold on. There he is. Hey, Steve, try that one more time. I think we just gave you the privilege. Ah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, there we go. That's, right. that's not the right one, though. Can you see that now? We can see it. You can see the presentation? No, it's just of your blue screen. Oh. Uh, um. 
Joe? Yeah. Okay, good. You're on speaker. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I apologize. It's just not it's not working for me. So um if you have a copy of the presentation, I'll just I'll refer to the pages as I go through. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um I'm gonna start actually with page four, the summary of results. And we're doing this evaluation as of July first, two thousand nineteen. They're doing every other year, and um, this is just a summary of the results since the last time in 2017, giving a split of liability. So, just gives you some sense of where that liability sits, if you will, between the groups. About 44% with the police, 35% with your the town participants, and 21% with the Board of Education. It's not a huge change since last time, but I always like to start with that. There were um, there was a plan change since the last valuation for teachers hired after 2020, coming up July 1st. Um, they will no longer be eligible for post 65 benefits from the plan. They continue to have access to pre 65 benefits so long as they pay a premium. As a practical matter, there was no impact in this valuation. Only the people there in the plan as of July 1st of last year, but going forward. That will have an impact. It'll change the trajectory of the liability growth. Reduce it what it would have. Been. Uh, we did look at some assumption changes for this valuation, as we always do. I'll go into a little more detail in a couple of minutes, but um, they're listed here in terms of what we looked at: investment returns and demographic assumptions, certain participants, the trend rate, the mortality projection scale, and some asset values. About that in a moment. Um, from from a statewide perspective, we do a survey every year. We're getting ready to update it. The updated one will be up, out in, the, in a few weeks. But um, the plan's funded ratio, and I'll talk about that in a moment. What that means: assets versus liabilities is higher than most plans. The median ratio out there in the state of Connecticut is 23.7 percent. So you're above that, but 57 percent of the plans in the state are unfunded. That's what the next slide shows on page five. Um, off to the left, you can see that those are 57% of the plans in the state don't even have a, a dollar in their trust because they haven't set it up yet. And you can see the distribution for the remaining plans. So you're in the third bucket over from the left. Um, so you've got basically 76% of the plans in Connecticut either have a lower ratio than the town of Woodbridge haven't set up the trust. So that's that's a good position. Mm -hmm. Remember that um, this was just set up about a decade ago in terms of been having an account for these liabilities. So it's going to be a long road to, to get to just going into a little more details about the things we looked at in terms of assumptions of past the investment return um, based on your target asset allocation and our current view of the world in terms of capital market assumptions, we believe that an assumption of six and eight to six and five eighths percent range is reasonable. You had been at six and three quarters two years ago, and um, based on our review and, and talking with Tony as we were going through the valuation, um, that assumption was lower to 6.50 percent. <laughs> this valuation, so a little more conservative. It's Kind of uh, more in the middle of the range based on your allocation. The median um, assumption out there now for funded OPEB plans is at 6.75. We're a little bit more conservative. That that increased the liability a little bit because um, investment return is not expected to be as high going forward, so that increases the liability in the short term. We did pick up um, the latest mortality projection scale. That's that's just a view of the future in terms of life expectancy going forward versus today. Um, we took a look at retirement turnover because you know your group. Um, we really mapped the assumptions from the Connecticut MERS plan for your group over to this valuation. Those assumptions had been updated since 2017, so mapped them over. Um, OPEB benefits. Not everybody takes advantage of those when they get to retirement um, because 
there's some cost sharing involved on the retirees part in certain circumstances. And so we backed that down. It had been pretty, very conservative with the police in town. We didn't make a big change, but based on trends, we, we knocked that down from 100% to 95%, so 90% part of that. And then um, finally, healthcare cost trend rates. This is just looking in the future, how those costs are expected to, to trend. Um, healthcare costs clearly increase over time, and we updated that based on the current model. So in terms of the assumption changes, net, that was about a 1% increase in liability at the end of the day. Um, asset smoothing, that's not an assumption change. It's something where we um, smooth out ups and downs in the market in terms of the assets that we measure for the funded status, and it just it'll smooth out the funding of the plan versus using the market. It really had an immaterial impact for the 19 valuation because we were just getting started. So on net, uh, page seven. The liabilities came out lower than we were projecting and had favorable experience. The premium increases were uh, quite a bit lower than we were expecting or assumed, and some change in the demographics. So at the end of the day, the liability was uh, almost $2 million less than we were expecting. Assumption changes, the ones I just talked about, offset or ate up part of that. So those increased the liability about 800000 At the end of the day, the liabilities came in less than than expected in page eight. Um, and in the interest of time, I'll just focus on the bottom part of this chart. It's, it's a breakdown of the liability versus the asset. So if you look down towards the bottom of the page, 2019, the total liability is about 19.77 million. And that's the first approximation about where it sat last time. Otherwise, we would have expected it higher for the reasons I just talked about. So it was about the same, and but the assets went up, um, at least as of July 119. So unfunded liability went down um, by about 1.1 uh, 1. 1 million. So unfunded liability is down about 14.8, and the funded ratio, which is just the ratio of that asset versus the liability, so that, that's where you get the 25.2%. That's a that's a good trend uh, versus where it was in 2019. We do have some new graphs in the report versus the old format, as far as what those trends have been. Page nine, you can see the liability has grown as you ex expect it to do, but you can see you can see the kind of the flatness, 17 versus 19, um, whereas the assets grew a little bit. So we translate that to the funded ratio. So we like to see that upward slope in that ratio down there. And as I mentioned, um, it is going to take a number of years to get towards full funding, but there's a positive trend. Um, I'm going to skip to uh, the ADAC, and that's page 12. The ADAC is the, is the town's contribution as we develop. So it's a funding contribution. This is um, somewhat unusual in the OPEB world where we see this, this decline over the last several years, and that's really attributed to the funding discipline of, of the town. Um, you're putting in, I believe, $300,000 per year into the trust, but also, probably more importantly, you've had very favorable experience on the liability side, fortunately, during this time. The types of gains that I talked about earlier, and you've had some other gains over the years. That's that's uh, we typically don't see that, but actually the funding requirements at least for this valuation have come and be a place to be. And um, just to summarize the data, I know we're running short on time. This just shows the number of participants in the plan as of the valuation date. So all told, on page 14, you have 294 participants covered by these benefits, and you can see the breakdown between the group and 132 actives and between retirees and dependents of retirees, 162, those two buckets combined.
This uh, page 15 is just a little more detail as to how we, this is just a disclosure from the financial reporting that gets done every year, um, financial report. But we, it shows kind of under the hood the, the details. We look at the target, target asset allocation by class, um, large cap equities, mid small cap equities, so forth. And this is based on um, our capital market assumptions. There's a long term expected real rate of return for each of those classes. Take a weighted average, and then we add long term inflation expectations. So the raw number is, is about six and an eight, as I talked about earlier. There is, there is some data that shows you can achieve additional returns above that through asset selection rebalancing and so forth, potentially as much as 50 basis points on top of that. So the six and the six and a half is in that range. Obviously we'll continue to monitor that, um, especially as you know, 2.6 was Social Security's long-term assumption until very recently. Their trustees report just came out last week or so, and they knocked that down to 2.4, which is not going to help in terms of um, you know, a higher rate of return assumption, but it is something we want to keep looking at. And then, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I would, no, I don't know if anybody had any questions. Yeah, because I know we're running, running short on time. Yeah, right. I mean, so, big picture, the funded, funded status is is up, plans healthy, had favorable experiences last time. And we'll have to just continue to monitor uh, these two assumptions on page 16. It's the investment return and the mortality assumption. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, let's move on. Let's, is Joe available to vote? Where's Beth? Beth, you got Joe? Yeah. Joe? Yeah, he's here. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Can you see his phone? Yeah, that's fine. Just, we're just, we got to scare us. We're going to. The first item on the agenda is the approval of minutes of the February 20th meeting, and I will move acceptance of the minutes of the um, February 20th, 2020 uh, meeting of the investment committee. Second, anybody? Second. Joe, okay. just, said, Joe just said second. All right, then. Any, any, any discussion or corrections? We can't get Steve. Uh, there you go. All right. With that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. And the last item, I don't, do I have that input? Oh, here. Okay. I have to approve um, an invoice for Hooker and Holcomb's actuary evaluation in the amount of $10,300. And I'm sure Tony has reviewed this. Yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah, we're good with it. So okay. I'll move acceptance of the um, invoice from Hooker Holcomb. Actuarial valuation and uh, the amount of 10300 Second. Any discussion on this? All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second, anybody? Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Okay, have a good night, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.